When asked to think of an athlete, many people tend to imagine a strong, fast, and agile person. Even when looking at the definition from the Cambridge Dictionary, it states that an athlete is a person who is very good at physical exercise and sports, typically one who competes in organized events. Even when looking at definitions, I found contender, contestant, jock, and even muscle person, all of which give reference to the physical and competitive aspects of sports. However, the main determiner in an athlete's potential is all mental. I have been a competitive dancer since the age of seven years old, and in 2022, I came to the realization that the biggest barriers I had surrounding me were not, an, were not only physical. Dance competitions are what studios work up to. They are the final project. You learn, clean, and attempt to perfect your dances, all for this outcome-based atmosphere, and it can cause some anxiety for athletes. You place first or last, and this can cause athletes to build perfectionist tendencies. This can also lead to them creeping into their lives and causing various repercussions and leading to mental block. Also, when athletes lead to the mental block, it can cause them more anxiety, which in turn, which in turn leads to them, which in turn leads to them freezing. Also, so I tend to have this a lot and I would always push myself to an unrealistic standard of perfection, which is unattainable and unsustainable. So one day, I was in the studio running my dances and I started to feel some pain in my back. And my left leg was tingling, but I continued to dance. Within the next 15 minutes, I lost feeling in my left leg and I had to sit out and go see a doctor. They advised me to stop dancing and to take a break in hopes of healing. However, I felt that I couldn't as I had a performance within the next month. However, I had no choice but to sit out for one week and I felt like all of the work I had had so far that year had been for nothing. Once the performance came and I was back, well, I wasn't allowed to be back, but I had returned with the help of a lot of ice, heat, ibuprofen, and adrenaline, I made it through the two performances. By the end of the last performance, I had collapsed onto the dressing room floor in tears and I was unable to walk. I had to be carried to my car. The next day when I went to go see my doctor, they told me that I had permanently damaged a nerve in my left leg and it still affects me to this day. Because of my mindset of pushing myself to this unrealistic standard and never letting myself have a break, I put a, ba a barrier in the path of my potential. Because of this, it now affects me to this day, and now I'm having to shift my mindset around this. It is a lot easier said than done, and I'm still working on this, but I believe a lot of athletes need to reteach themselves how to re-enter sport in a positive manner that will regress the amount of setbacks we see. This year, I suffered another major injury. I was in the middle of a jazz class doing a jump that I've been doing since September when I fell. I was in shock, so it didn't seem too bad at first, but once I got home, I was in tears. I had to be taken to the hospital and get several x-rays. They thought I had broken three bones in my arm and possibly injured my neck. Thankfully, none of that was true. However, I did suffer extreme whiplash, multi-system blunt trauma, and a severe concussion. Due to this, I had to be pulled out of two competitions and the devastation of this news made me so angry. I wanted to jump back in with my team, but I knew the consequences of doing so would be much worse than what I was dealing with in the moment. My mother, who is funny enough a psychologist, told me that it is okay to sit with these emotions as long as I do not let them consume me and push me back in when I was not physically prepared. So this time, my return to sport was very different from my previous injury. I listened to my doctors, mother, teachers, and my, my own body, and slowly returned. When I finally returned to the stage, I was overjoyed, and I went in with no expectations. My only goal for the day was to make sure that my concussion was in check and I was not pushing myself too far. I was doing very well until my ballet solos. My final ballet solo had a lot of turns, so I became very dizzy, and by the end of it, I collapsed onto the floor because I couldn't stand. My ballet teacher came backstage and made sure I was okay, and having that support and knowing that it was okay for me to listen to myself and leave, I was able to do so without the fear of being judged. Coming to that realization, I realized it might be how we need to approach every competitive aspect of life keeping hold of the things that we can control. We can control our drive, passion, determination, and our attitude. We cannot control other people's opinions or our competitors. Dance is also a very subjective sport, once again showing that the marks that we receive are not always going to be set in stone. 
Athletes need to remember this because this is how we reach our true potential. If we always let others dictate our self-worth, we're always going to be stuck. We can even relate this to our everyday lives, such as in academics. If you label yourself a math person, you're more likely going to try harder in math and get higher marks than social, which you label yourself not good at. These mental labels we force upon ourselves are what dictate our worth because we create our hardest barriers to break in life. So, if you feel like you're at the bottom or at your lowest, turn internally and ask yourself, can I shift my mindset to shift my success? Because success is not linear. It is often the opposite with lots of ups and downs. And we can never strive for, for, for perfection because there is no such thing. Perfection is an ideal, but it is not the truth. If we only strive for what we can do our best, that is how we reach our true potential and break all of the barriers that we impose upon ourselves. Thank you.